I have to survive 100 days in a cave-only world. No trees or friendly creatures can be found here. Terrifying monsters wander the caves. And beyond the bedrock lies the unexplored deep dark dimension. Can I climb this mountain of challenges and reach the summit? Watch the end to find out. Also, if you go on to enjoy this video, make sure to click that subscribe button to join me along all of my journeys. Alright, day one. I spawned into a little island that was surrounded with water. Finding food and wood off the start was going to be a little bit difficult, but I saw some mushrooms on a hill. With absolutely no sunlight down here, it makes sense why mushrooms would be my main food source. So, I jumped off my island and started swimming towards the mushrooms. The fog here was pretty dense too. The first mushroom I picked wasn't very edible, but I ended up finding some sweet mushrooms that I could snack on. I then ran into my first hostile mob, which was a minor zombie. I gave him the quick one too, and I also found some cave roots that actually was a good source of food. I then found myself in a ravine and I spotted a mine shaft. So I gathered some blocks and made my way down to the mine shaft. These mine shafts are going to be my primary source of wood. I spotted a creeper as well, but he couldn't actually get up to me, so I was safe. I then gathered the materials necessary for some stone tools and torches, and I spotted a very ominous looking cave. Okay, that skeleton spotted me. Take this guy out real quick. God. I decided not to go down there and found some copper ore in the mine shaft. I then found some big patches of iron as I was definitely gonna have to suit up to have any chance to survive down here. I then spotted another creeper and went to go take him out. But when I went to go cross this natural looking bridge, it collapsed underneath my feet. Turns out there's unstable blocks that can fall out from underneath you if you're not careful. I took out the creeper and then collected some string in the abandoned mine shaft to make a bed. And I tried my best to get some rest. What is that? Wait, am I awake? Hello? Oh my gosh, what was that? Okay, maybe I shouldn't be going to sleep in the caves. So after that rough night of sleep, I picked up my bed and briefly escaped the mine shafts. After mining a bunch more iron, I started to suit up, and I was now full iron armor with iron tools. I still had to be careful though, because I was venturing into the unknown. I ended up finding some stone that looked like a magma block, and it actually spawned lava when I broke it. So I made a bucket just in case, and found some more mushrooms in this cave. Okay, looks like there's some gold. Oh, diamonds! So I mined all the gold and lapis I found as well. And as for the diamonds I found, turns out it was only one diamond. Definitely unlucky, but you know what? I ended up finding this weird looking spawner. For some reason it wasn't breaking. Hello? Uh, what is that sound? What the heck? Okay, fighter. Oh God, gotta run, need to run. Okay, okay, keep running, keep running. Skeleton, are you kidding me? Okay, just keep going, just keep going. Don't look back, don't look back. Okay, okay, I think I finally lost him. But, oh gosh, uh, where the heck am I? That is a lot of mushrooms. With this many mushrooms around, I knew I was going to be pretty good on food in this position. But with more mushrooms means more darkness. There are strange zombies everywhere, so I decided to pillar up and get onto the high ground. I dug into the side of the hill and actually found a pretty convenient opening to start my first base. I lit up the surrounding area and furnished my new living quarters. This place was going to need some work if I was going to live here, so I patched up some holes and decided to go back into the mine shafts on day four. I ended up finding a minecart chest with some melon seeds in it, replenished on more mushrooms, and found myself inside of a lava ravine. And that's when I found my second vein of diamonds. I placed down my water to make some obsidian, and unfortunately it was only a two vein of diamonds. I continued through the caves and then ran into something very unusual. Wait, what is this? Looks like there's some stuff growing out of it. What the? I managed to take that one out, but I ended up running into even more. And it turns out these zombies actually had minerals growing out of them. And then I ran into something even creepier. Wait, what's a spider? Okay, it's just walking on a wall. Okay, yep, that's normal. After taking out that spider, I ended up finding a zombie spawner. After taking out the zombies, I went inside and lit it up, and found a name tag and some wheat inside of the chest. I then ran into a couple of zombies that were outside, and for some reason they were acting really strange. Are you okay, sir? Oh, okay. No, he sees me. Um, are these, like, blind zombies or something? So after taking out those two zombies, I went back to the obsidian, crafted myself a diamond pickaxe, found some diamonds behind some obsidian, and after mining all the diamonds, I mined all the obsidian I would need to make another portal and enchantment table. I then returned back to the surface on day five, smelted up all of my ores, crafted myself a diamond sword, and since I was a little cramped, I decided to expand my area just a little bit more. Once I was finished, I decided it was time to head into the nether, so I lit up the nether portal, made sure I was good on food. Luckily, it looked like I spawned in a pretty safe spot, so I mined my first vein in nether quartz, and before I knew it, I was getting attacked by a mob I've never seen before. They almost looked like little Pac-Mans. They are almost too cute to be hostile. I also mined myself a little bit of gold, crafted myself a golden helmet, and then continued my journey through the nether. After a bit more traveling, I ended up finding a warped forest. I also made sure to mine some glowstone along the way, and now I finally had myself a decent source of wood. I also took some of the shroom lights, and found my first bastion remnant. I immediately started to get swarmed by piglins. Oh my gosh, okay, that's way too many. Pillar up quickly. Please don't bow me 
off. Now that I had the high ground, I slowly but surely took out each and every piglin and did a little bit of trading with some of them. I ended up finding a chest which had some arrows and a crossbow inside and found myself some soul sand and nether warts. After gathering those materials, I found another chest that had a gold block, obsidian, and some more arrows. I also found a golden apple and golden boots at soul speed 3. After looting the bastion, I started heading back home and got jumped by a bunch more of these little Pac-Man guys. Why are there so many of these guys? At least they dropped some gold. So after defeating those mobs, I also fought an enderman and mined myself a bit more gold, but got jumped while doing so. And after a bit of travel, I finally made my way back home. But when I came out on the other side of the portal, I didn't recognize where I was. Where the heck am I? Wait, what? What is that thing? Okay, um, those are not normal zombies. What is up with their faces? They also have no arms at all. This place just keeps getting creepier by the minute. Should maybe try and get some rest. What is happening? It's just a dream, just a dream. So while trying to keep my mind off of what I just saw, I started to excavate some stone and dirt so I could make a pathway down and across a ravine, start working on making some farms. I first started with a melon farm, realized there was actually a bunch of tall grass around, so I collected a bunch of seeds and bones and made myself a little wheat farm. Right after creating my wheat farm, I actually found a zombie villager. So I led him back all the way to my base and trapped him inside of a wall. I then decided to name him Jerry. Jerry didn't know yet, but we were gonna be really good friends. I knew at this point, I Iron armor wasn't going to cut it anymore, so I headed back into the caves, and pretty shortly after, I found my first eight vein of diamonds. After mining the diamonds, I mined some redstone and iron, but then started getting swarmed by a bunch of zombies. Wait, why is that zombie red? Is that supposed to be a redstone zombie? Seems like there was a kind of zombie for each ore. After defeating all the zombies, I did some more mining, and ended up finding some more diamonds. When I went to go mine the diamonds, I ended up getting jumped by some more of those colored zombies. Whoa, where do these guys come from? Okay. Be careful, be careful. I just need to not die here. The sword's definitely coming in handy. Oh wait, they dropped diamonds. The diamond I found ended up only being a one vein, but I ended up finding some more diamonds underwater. So I made myself some oak doors so I could breathe underwater and mine the diamonds. I now had more than enough diamonds to craft myself a full suit of diamond armor. So I returned to the surface on day 13 and saw a cow in the distance. I thought cows didn't spawn here. Wait, wh what the heck? It's attacking me. This thing has hair brine like eyes. Okay, it wasn't that strong, but sure was weird. After that strange occurrence, I went back up to my base, placed down my old armor on an armor stand, and decided it was time to return to the nether to start searching for a fortress. After about a day of travel, I found myself a nether fortress, defeated a bunch of wither skeletons, and after traversing the nether fortress, I finally found myself a blaze spawner. So I spent the next day just farming a bunch of blazes so I could have as many blaze rods as I needed. I also found some chests which had some runes in them. I didn't actually know what these were, but they seemed to be in every single one of the nether fortress chests. I also took out some magma cubes. After exploring the fortress, I ended up running into some mushroom mobs. I didn't know what they did, but I left them alone, and I arrived back to my nether portal on day 15. On my way back home, I ended up seeing a witch in the distance, and while killing the witch, I realized I was standing over a spawner. I dug inside, and there was a skeleton spawner. It was actually right next to my base, too. I defeated the skeletons and mined these jars that had loot inside. I also defeated a nearby witch, made myself a brewing stand, and made myself a weakness potion. Found myself another zombie villager that I Lord back to my base and trapped inside. Then using the weakness potion and some golden apples, I restored them back to villagers. After naming the first guy Jerry, I figured it'd be suitable to make this guy named Tom. I'm sure they'll get along just fine. After waiting a while, they both restored back into villagers, so I figured now would be a good time to make them both a little home. I mined out a nice little area so that I have plenty of room to roam around in, and I put some fence gates at the front. I then went over to my crops to farm my melons and wheat, and I then had Tom become a stonemason. He offered a pretty good trade of clay for emeralds, so I went into the mines to collect a bunch of wood and clay so that I could trade with him and build. I then get a bunch of emeralds from Tom, and with the wood I just got, I fenced off my entire farm. I then got to work on designing the area by replacing the floors, walls, and ceilings, and made the villager's house look a little bit better with some staircases. And that's when I realized I had built a villager house before I even built my own. But you know what? It was okay, because it's pretty important to always accommodate your guests. So I made sure to give them some bed and breakfast, and I let them do their thing. I then went and smelted up a bunch of cobblestone into stone, and what do you know? We had ourselves a little Tom and Jerry Jr. I then traded some stone for some emeralds and unlocked some new trades at Tom. I then farmed my crops one more time. Before I knew it, I had my first iron golem spawn. I then decided to go back exploring in the mines and I found another skeleton spawner. So I lit this one up. I then found a strange looking building that had some pottery jars with loot in them and some bookshelves. So I borrowed all that stuff, brought it back home and made a lectern and enchantment table. And now using the lectern, I was now able to trade with Jerry. I then repaired my helmet and enchanted my armor with full protection one. I also put sharpness on my sword and then started lighting up the surrounding area 
area all around my base. Being in a cave only world, there is way too much darkness. So this is going to help me a lot from getting attacked as much. After a bunch of time trying to get good enchants, I finally got a fortune three book from Jerry and a silk touch book from the other villager. I then went back into the mines to mine some more diamonds and put silk touch in a brand new diamond pick. I then returned back to the nether to travel back to the fortress and started to farm wither skeletons to try and get wither skeleton skulls. When I was near the basalt biome, I saw something really strange. What is that? Hello, Mr. Giant. Uh, I'm gonna try and take you out now. Okay, oh my gosh, he hit me up far. And, oh, well, that was easier than expected. On my way home from only getting one Wither Skeleton Skull, I ran into two more of these Basalt Giants. One on one, they weren't that bad to fight, but two on one, it was a little bit more difficult. So I nearly died, but luckily I survived. I returned back home on day 25 and harvested my crops, planted down a nether wart farm. And after doing that, I did some trading with the villagers. I decided now would be a good time to start expanding my own base. So for the rest of the day, I did some renovations so that I'd have a lot more room to work with. After finishing the ceiling and interior, I figured I'd go to sleep. But at this point, I still hadn't learned my lesson. Wait, that's me having an outer body experience? I, I can't move. Wait, what's happening? <gasps> what the heck? That was my base. There's, there's nothing here. What is going on? Well, after that pretty scary experience, I decided to just keep renovating my base and try to get my mind off of it. I installed a new roof, decorated the walls and the ceiling. And after finishing the ceiling and putting in some doors, I thought my new base was coming along pretty well. This is definitely going to be a lot better than living inside that little hole. For the next couple of days, I rotated trades at the villagers to get a mending trade, traded for a bunch of emeralds so I could afford my first mending book. And after a while longer, I finally got a looting three enchant. I was pretty happy about getting that because now I could get looting three on my sword and have a much better chance of getting wither skeleton skulls. So I returned to the nether fortress and started killing wither skeletons. And it wasn't long after till I started getting wither skeleton skulls. I also had to deal with some pigmen as well, but I took those guys out pretty easily. After getting the wither skeleton skulls I needed, I ran into some strange beetles on the way back home. I left them alone though and then returned back to base and started making preparations to fight the wither. I was definitely going to need potions, so I harvested all the necessary materials I'd need to brew. I then brewed myself strength two potions and also brewed myself a bunch of instant health splash two potions. I then enchanted a bow and found a spot that was far away from my base where I could fight the wither. I then placed down the last wither skeleton skull, backing up and drinking my strength through potion. And the wither exploded, marking the start of the battle. I knew I was going to have to kite around and use the terrain to my advantage. I started to use my bow and started pelting the wither as much as I could. I then noticed the wither was actually getting stuck on some of the blocks. Wait, is he stuck? Oh, not anymore. I kept on landing shots, but I realized I was getting pretty low. So I threw down a health potion, but was taking way too much damage. I was going to need to get him to the next phase quick. I landed in my last shot, which put him into the sword phase, refilled my health potions and started to kite away. Okay, time to take this guy out. Oh gosh, I'm low. Okay, throw down a health potion. Just sent me flying. Okay, too much damage. Okay, throw down two health potions. Come on, come on. I got this. Let's finish him off. Get out of my way, zombie. Okay. Just a few more hits, a few more hits. So close. One more health potion left, come on. Throw it down. Yes! Okay. You know, that was uh, a little bit more difficult than expected. Now that I had finally defeated the wither, I collected my nether star and nearly died of wither after the fact. But I survived and made a beacon and was able to make just enough iron blocks to make the base for it. So I pillared all the way up and mined up to the surface until I finally hit the bedrock. Then I went back down and placed down the beacon. And with the bedrock only being one layer thick, it worked. I then put haste one on it and started to mine out a ton more space so the villagers would have plenty of room to keep on breeding. And of course, I made sure the interior looked all nice for them. Once I was finished with the villager base, I crafted myself an ender chest. And decided to go on a big mining trip. I mined tons of different ores along my mining trip, but I was mainly looking to get as much as I could to upgrade my beacon. I found a bunch of diamonds and also made sure to use my silk touch pick so that I could fortune the ores later on. I also managed to find a zombie spawner, which I ended up breaking, and found an abandoned mine shaft with another zombie spawner right next to it. I found some pretty massive caves, which helped me get a ton of iron and gold. I was going to need all I could get to upgrade my beacon. While in the depths of the caves, I ran into some really strange zombies. Whoa, 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 they're casting fire. Wait, what is going on? My eardrums. Okay, there's way too many. Throw it on a pot. Oh gosh. Okay, gotta take them out one by one. Not gonna complicate things. I'm just gonna use my bow. Yes, okay, okay. 
That was close. On day 40, I finally made it back to my base and decided it was time to start working on a skeleton grinder. So for the next couple of days, I got to work on creating it. This was going to supply me with tons of XP, bones, and arrows. After taking out the torches from the inside, it was working like a charm. Now that it was working, I grinded out some XP from the skeletons and got myself a fortune three pickaxe. I then used the fortune pickaxe and some diamonds I found and fortuned all the other ores I found in the caves. I then expanded the beacon and switched it to giving me speed. I was a bit hesitant, but you know what? I just decided to go to sleep. What's the worst that could happen? They're just dreams, right? Whoa! Okay, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Okay, wait, am I dreaming? What even is this thing? Can is it gonna die? Okay, I'm gonna drink a shrink too. Okay, got it. Whoa! It blew up? Wait. Oh my gosh, okay. There's withers everywhere. Oh my gosh, there's so many withers. Okay, I need to go heal. Oh gosh. I'm so low! Okay, I have a heart. Pot. Okay. Oh my gosh. My base is decimated. I gotta take out all these withers. Okay. One at a time, one at a time. Wait, okay. Okay, not again. Run away, run away. I don't wanna die. Take out the rest of these guys. Okay, that was the last of them. Ugh, my base. After that really crazy event, I began repairing my base. And after about a day of repairs, I finally restored it back to its original condition. You know what, from this point, I decided I'd get way stronger. If that was just a taste of the deep dark dimension, I had no chance. So I repaired all my armor, brewed new strength and instant health splash potions, and then went to the nether to go trade with some piglins. I made sure to bring a stack of gold with me so I'd be able to get a ton of resources. And I'd gotten a bunch of ender pearls to bring back. I turned them into eyes of ender and started to hunt for the stronghold, pointing me in the direction past my base. So I started following the eyes. I boated through the waters of the caverns, and I thought I had found the stronghold, but it ended up just being a dungeon. So I broke the spawners and took the loot. I actually managed to get a golden apple from it, and then I continued following the eyes of Ender. What are these things? No eyes, no nose, no mouth. What, what do these things even do? Well, I guess they drop slime balls at least. Could somebody tell me in the comments what the heck that thing was? Anyways, while I was journeying, I found some sort of strange structure, but the Ender eyes kept pointing me in a different direction. I wanted to explore the structure, but I also wanted to go to defeat the ender dragon, so I just decided to leave it be for now. Finally, the ender eye was leading me into some wall, so I dug through and finally found the stronghold. I defeated a skeleton that was wielding a sword, and I found a chest underneath the gravestone. I then found a massive room that had ender dragon heads and banners. This place is crazy. This was not your typical stronghold. I then found the library, which was also massive. There's plenty of bookshelves for me here, but I wanted to explore it later. For now, I want to focus on defeating the ender dragon. After exploring for a while, I finally found the portal room. I broke the spawner and started putting in the eyes of ender i almost ran out but luckily i had blaze powder in my ender chest i filled in the last eye of ender and gazed into the portal it was time to challenge the ender dragon i hopped through the portal and spawned underground so i dug my way up and finally reached the surface there was no turning back here but i was confident since i had prepared well i started by taking out the end crystals one by one using my bow to take out each of them i then pillared all the way up to take out the last one before i knew it the dragon started to perch so i used my water bucket to get down but he started to fly away already after a while he finally started to perch again so I popped my strength too and started to attack him as much as I could. I did as much damage as possible with my sword until he knocked me away. Luckily, I didn't get flung too high. I kept on pelting him with arrows as well, and then he came down for a second perch, so I did as much damage as I could, leaving him on one HP. I landed the last bow shot, defeating the Ender Dragon. This was only one small step to be able to challenge a deep, dark dimension. I was gonna need every single experience point I could get. After collecting all the EXP, I made sure to grab the Dragon Egg, and I decided it was too early to go through the portal, so I got some Ender Pearls and went through the end gateway. I wanted to find an end city before I left. I first grabbed some chorus fruit for some extra food, just in case. And after many days of travel, I finally found an end city. I made sure to take out a few shulker boxes and pillar my way to the top. I then used my ender pearl, but actually went through the roof. I then went to go loot the chests. There were some saddles and there was diamond armor with a protection four chest plate. I then went over to the end ship and I threw a pearl over and successfully made it. The chest underneath had some really good tools and I made sure to take the elytra. Can't forget the dragon head either. By using the Elytra, I was able to travel back much quicker. So after about a day of travel, I finally made it back to the end gateway. And then I went through the portal. There's always something satisfying about seeing your name in the credits. I was now back in the overworld. So I started heading back to base. And with the bookshelves I got from the stronghold, I started to make an enchantment room. After completing it, I started to work on getting some better enchantments. I got a much stronger bow, a stronger sword. And after trading some mending books of villagers, I put mending and a breaking three on my Elytra. I also got better pants and got boots and multi-jump three. I wasn't sure what that was, but when I 
I went outside, I realized I could now triple jump. That was going to be a huge help all around for escaping mobs and building and just everything. Now that I was much better equipped, I figured I'd sleep outside just in case, since I didn't want my base to get griefed in case something would happen. So I placed down my bed and went to sleep. Where the heck am I? It's that thing again. Am I it's looking at me? No, 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 no! Whoa. I couldn't tell if that was a dream or a nightmare. I wanted a plan to find the source of this. After thinking long and hard, I came up with absolutely nothing. I think I just needed a little more time to think of something. I also remembered I found that Excavate 3 pickaxe from before. So I went to go test it in the nether, and it was extremely OP. For each block I mined, it mined 20 more. Knowing what this pickaxe did, I mined down to a good level to mine for netherite, and started hunting with my efficiency 4. After a while, I finally found my first vein of netherite, and my pickaxe was nearly broken. So I switched back to the excavation pickaxe, and this thing was working extremely well. I was able to find more than enough netherite that I was going to need to create full netherite armor. So after collecting all the netherite I needed, I returned back to the surface and fought some foxhounds that were near my portal and then returned back to base. I also had the idea of combining my silk touch and excavate three pickaxe to mine a ton of stone. This is going to help me a lot with villager trading since stonemasons took stone for emeralds. So I got myself a full shulker of stone and once I returned to the villagers, I realized I had a pet cat. After trading, I got myself another mending book and put it on my chest plate and on day 67, I started to work on my iron golem farm. I wanted to have a really good source of iron so I didn't have to resort to using other ores for my beacon. I also realized while using my elytra that I can actually use multi-jump while flying with the elytra. It's actually really cool. I then moved over three villagers to the iron golem farm and for the final step I had to lead a zombie up the staircase and trap it in a one by one so that any iron golems that spawn went for the zombie. I then had to put a name tag on the zombie and named him Bob and the iron golem farm was working like a charm. I then harvested my potato farm. Afterwards I then went to go get some marble with my excavation pickaxe as I wanted to gather materials to start working on making myself a little village. I then smelted the ancient debris and netherite scraps. I then crafted netherite ingots. And then I made a smithing table to turn all my armor into netherite armor. Now I was making progress. On day 74, I decided to go mining for a bit. And after I enchanted a diamond axe and started getting to work on building some villager homes. I also built a wall around the iron golem farm and was starting to really rack up some iron. I'd say my village was coming along pretty well, but I still wanted to add on to it. I went up the stairs to collect some resources, but then... Uh, what are these things? They're just walking heads, what the heck? Where could these things have come from? There's even more up here, what? I've gotta find the source. So after defeating all those strange mobs, I started to light up everything. I also made sure to put up some cobblestone walls to secure the location, and proper lighting around the entire base. And I realized they were coming from underneath the stairs. And then I remembered this ravine was really close by, and when I peered down the ravine, there was a ton charging at me. That must have been where they were coming from. Before I could light it up, I had to defeat them all first. Whoa, I'm getting poisoned? What? What is that? What? It just griefed my base. I gotta take this thing out first. Okay, there's one, there's, there's more. Okay. Well, focus this guy. Okay, this guy's a tank. A little bit more damage. Okay, take out the rest of these. Oh wait, throw down the pot. All right, only a few more. Okay. After getting rid of the mobs, I repaired the damages. I then went inside the ravine to light it up as much as I could. I did not want any of those mobs reaching my villagers. I then worked on creating another bridge to my base. And having an extra bridge and staircase, I thought turned out pretty well. I then began working on creating another villager home. So for the next couple of days, I dug out an area, put in walls, and put in a roof. My idea was to make two separate homes, one for Tom and one for Jerry. I then put on the finishing touches. And after completing this villager house, getting a good look at my village, it was coming along a lot better. Now that those are complete, I collected the iron from my iron golem farm and expanded my beacon two extra layers. I actually ended up running out of iron, so I had to use a couple blocks of gold, but nonetheless, I was able to get speed two on the beacon. This would help me move around my base a lot easier. I then put Jerry into a minecart and moved him into his home. And don't worry, I did not forget about Tom. I pushed him all the way to his home and of course made sure to give him a bed. I then returned back to the nether and found a crimson forest. I had an idea to get an infinite supply of food, so I went up to the bedrock layer and using an ender pearl, I went to the top. Now that I was on the top, I needed a way back and I made sure to bring obsidian and a flint and steel so I could make a portal. I then started working on making a hoglin farm. I made sure to do it above the crimson forest so that hoglins could spawn on this platform. So after a few days of building it and lighting up the surrounding area, the hoglin farm was complete. But I needed a spot to AFK, so I made a pillar all the way up to height limit so that hoglins could spawn. And the hoglin farm was working just as intended, giving me a great supply of cooked pork chops and leather. On day 83, I returned back to my base and I wanted to go to sleep, but this time I had a plan. I wanted to make and drink night vision potions before I went to sleep to see if I could potentially lucid dream. Here goes nothing. It's just a dream. It's just a dream. Whoa. Is that... that 
place from before? What significance does that have? Okay, I have to go there. After seeing that, I made sure to bring a bunch of potions with me before I left, and then started to make my way back to that strange structure. After a couple days of travel, I finally made it. I needed to get to the bottom of this. Okay, I finally made it. There's nothing here? Oh wait, there's signs. To join the divine, think between the lines. What does that mean? It's supposed to be a riddle? Am I divine? Am I supposed to break vines? I, I don't get it. I'm just gonna try and break all these vines. I was pretty confused at this point, so I just started to break as many vines as I could. Wait, there's a there's a lever. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, I heard pistons. That opened a door? It did. There's more signs. To enter the dark, go beyond the bedrock. And there's a massive hole. It looks like there's water. You know what? I'm jumping down. Please don't be fake water. Oh, looks like I'm okay. Well, there's diamonds. Wait, there's an opening. Wait, what? What's in here? What is... Mine the rock to unlock? Okay, I'm gonna mine some stuff. What is- How am I supposed to mine bedrock? I must have sat there for 10 minutes trying to figure that riddle out, but I just couldn't solve it. If that was truly the way to enter the deep dark, I wanted to make sure I felt like I was fully prepared. So I grinded out some levels and got some more mending books and put mending on my pants and boots. I then grinded out some more levels so I could repair all my armor. And for the next couple of days, I started to hunt down more witches. There was no sugar cane down here, so I needed some way to get sugar. I then brewed some speed two potions and made my sword into a netherite sword and upgraded it to sharpness four. You know, I I feel like I haven't done much exploring, so I went out to go exploring for a bit, went through a cave, and ended up finding some strange-looking crystals. They were called corundum crystals, and I thought they looked really cool. So I spent the next couple of days mining a bunch, and then brought them back to base. I then used these cool-looking crystals to decorate my base, just to give it some extra color, and honestly, I thought it looked pretty good. It definitely spiced up the look of the village. I then grabbed my ender chest and started making my way back towards the structure. While flying there, I had a flash of inspiration. Maybe by rock, they meant diamonds, so I mined the diamonds. Yeah, I was still pretty unsure, but I brought him over to the altar. All right, here it goes. It, it worked? Now what? Okay, so now- Whoa! What's happening? What's happening? Wait, uh, I'm in stone? Am I still in the overworld? I'm just gonna keep digging, I guess. Wait, there's a ravine. I guess I'll go down here. Is this the- Deep dark? This has to be it. Wait, are these diamonds? Can't be. After looking at the name of the diamonds, Deep Stone Diamonds, I knew exactly where I was. These are the zombies I saw in my dreams. Take these out real quick. My sword is pretty good. What is over here? It's a big hole. I slowly made my way down this hole and made sure to light it up. Wait, what? That's the thing. That's what watched me in my dreams. Die. Yes. Oh, wait. There's, there's more. Is this a common mob down here? There's so many. They're kind of strong too. What in the world is over here? Oh my gosh, that has a lot of spawners. Okay, take them out one by one. Take them out. I've got to take out all these spawners. Okay, last two. Boom. Easy. I then continued to keep exploring the deep dark dimension. I ran into even more of those strange looking monsters. I took them out pretty easily. I was starting to get lost in these caves. It wasn't until I found another ravine. These are those things I saw in my first ever dream. There's a bunch of them. Luckily, I can kill them in one hit, but oh my gosh. Okay, wait, there's so many. Kill them. Kill them. Oh gosh, get away from me. I luckily managed to take them all out and ran into even more of those deep dark zombies, but I couldn't find anything else down here. These mobs just seemed endless. Then had an idea. What if I slept in the deep dark? What did I have to lose? I've come this far. I may as well try it. Oh gosh. Okay. Where am I? Blind to the darkness. What? What is this place? What's above me, too? Is this some sort of... I don't even know. There's lanterns everywhere. What is it? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh no. Those are... Wait. No. Dragon potion. There's three of them. Throw it on a pot. Okay. Refill. Run. Run. Okay. Oh my gosh. Use my bow. I can't, I can't see anything. Throw it on a pot. Bow it again. Okay. I need to take them out one by one. I'm running out of potions. Gosh, get away! They do so much damage! Wait, I think I killed one! Yes! Two more left! Oh gosh! Two hearts! Double pot! Refill! No, 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 no! One more potion left! Go, go, get away! I gotta eat food. Bow them, bow them. They have to be getting low, right? Get away! Come on! They have to be- yes! One more! Use my shield! Come on! Yes! Now what? What was the point of escape the darkness? What's that supposed to mean? Five? Huh? What? What's go- Four? Oh gosh, it's a countdown. Okay, it's an escape. There's a- there's a cave. Am I supposed to go? I don't- I don't know. I'm just gonna do it. Go. 
go, go. I don't want to know what happens when it goes to one. Okay, just keep going, just keep going. Th there's nothing there. What? I'll just keep going down this ca- What? What was that? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. There's explosions. No, no, no. Keep running. I have to get out of here. There's a dead end. What? Oh no, what do I do? Oh gosh, okay, just jump. Please don't die, please don't die. <sighs> wait, wait. I'm- I'm alive! So, on my elytra, I traveled back through the caverns. I felt a lot of different emotions on the way back. Satisfaction, relief, even a little bit of sadness. Felt like I was reaching the finish line of a journey that I didn't want to end. But reflecting on everything I've done, from starting off in a little hobbit hole, trapping my first infected villager, exploring the nether, defeating the ender dragon, creating my own little village, venturing into the deep dark dimension, it was definitely one heck of an adventure. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, and I hope you guys have a good one.